Hello everyone, it's Year Peacekeeper coming at you with the next video in our How to Play series on the Russian destroyer lines. This is the Tier 9 Tashkent destroyer. The destroyer Tashkent is a singular destroyer built by the Italian company Odero Ten Terni Orlando for the Soviet Navy. The intention was for the Italians to design and build the first ship in the class, which would have been Tashkent, and then the Soviet shipyards would build the remainder of the class. What came out of it was actually the creation of the Kiev class, or Project 48, and Tashkent's design was used really only in as an inspiration for Kiev's layout. Tashkent was officially ordered as Project 20 in 1935 as part of the five-year plan for the Soviet Navy. Tashkent was able to achieve a 43-knot top speed during its speed trial, but this was done without armament. And prior to the completion of the B-2LM dual 130mm turrets, Tashkent only had three single 130mm turrets. Can you imagine if they gave us that in-game? Tashkent was ironically named the Blue Cruiser because it was painted cobalt blue when he was operating in the Black Sea's fleet. He famously fought in the Siege of Sevastopol and made 40 supply trips through the German blockade to reinforce troops there. He also escorted a lot of convoys in the Black Sea. Unfortunately, Tashkent would be damaged heavily by Stuka dive bombers in 1942. He sailed to Novorossiysk, but sank in port, where his guns were salvaged to be used on the destroyer Ognovoy. The claim is that in Tashkent's career, he sailed 27,000 miles, escorted 17 convoys without a single loss, carried 19,300 troops, 2,538 tons of ammo, food, and other supplies, and all of that was hauled into Sevastopol. Tashkent supposedly had 100 live main caliber bombardments of German troop positions, silenced six batteries, damaged an airfield, shot down 13 aircraft, and sank a torpedo boat. All of that sounds about accurate for how Tashkent performs in-game. Tashkent basically builds upon the previous Kiev, adding in a little bit better hit point pool, but more at, more importantly, you know, adds in the ability to heal. Tashkent has high rate of fire, long range, good accuracy, high fire chance, and a high rate of speed. All of that makes for just an absolute fun ship to play if, if you just absolutely enjoy burning ships to the ground. Tashkent is definitely your ship of choice. Also, Tashkent, you know, has kind of had a little bit of a storied history. In fact, the nickname Trash Can kind of was, you know, stuck upon him in the prior to the destroyer split because he wasn't really that strong of a destroyer. But since he's received a, a lot of attention and that has made him quite viable, mostly the ability to choose a heal instead of the smoke option, the double rudder shift module for what you, if you want to call it that the tier eight and above module slot where you can get the 40% reduction in rudder shift time. All, um, all of that stuff really goes on to basically make a Kiev improved and Kiev is already plenty strong, so you can imagine how that actually turns out. Of course, Tashkent, like all the other Russian destroyers, basically plays as a long-range gunboat. While he does have torpedoes that are 8 kilometers in their, you know, range, uh, it's very difficult to use those torpedoes outside of an ambush attack without a high-point captain. In fact... You would need a 19-point captain to really take advantage, or an 18-point captain to really take advantage of uh, the ability to use the torpedoes in any comfortable manner, and that would require you to get Concealment Expert, which I don't recommend, and we talked about that in the Captain Skills video at the beginning of this series. So... I, I want to briefly touch about this uh, discussion on heal versus smoke. And ultimately, it's going to come down to your individual play style. Now, uh, the argument's always going to exist that, hey, you know, there's a lot of radar and hydro at, at these tiers. There's a lot of aircraft at these tiers. Uh, smoke really isn't that useful. You basically get detected all the time anyway. Well, 
Yes and no. If you're paying attention to the map, you can definitely use smoke effectively. It just requires you to actually be, you know, situationally aware of what's going on around you. And using it has, you know, it has its limitations. It definitely does. The heal, it's not... It's not a battleship heal, and even with the flag to increase how much is repaired, you're only looking to repair about 10 to 15% of your hit point pool every time it comes up. Sure, that makes you stay alive just a little bit longer, makes things a little bit more comfortable, and as you can see, obviously, I run it here. Um, So, I mean, it has its uses. It it definitely does. It just kind of depends on your play style. If you're the type of person who likes to do the long-range HE spamming while speeding along at 42.5 knots plus with the speed boost on, this is, you know, you know, don't hesitate to run the heel. If you're the type of person who prefers to be a little bit more of a team player, smoke is definitely an option. So let's talk about some stats. Tashkent has 21,800 hit points, up to 20 millimeters of armor, Woo! Yeah, still only 19 millimeters of side plating. So there's 20 millimeters hidden around in here somewhere. Oh, the conning tower. Okay. And the main battery consists of three dual 130 millimeter 50 caliber B2LM turrets with a 15.2 kilometer range. They have a four second reload time, 180 degree turn time of 21.3 seconds, 120 meter dispersion, but more importantly, an 11% fire chance. And that's going to end up being with both of the flags for increasing your chance of fire. So that's that's 1%. And then if you throw a demo expert on the captain, that's an additional 2%. So the base fire chance there is going to be 8 which is really, really good for HE on a destroyer, especially in the 5-inch caliber range. Uh, AP damage, you know, AP is definitely not anything to sneeze at either. 2,500 damage, but it's coming out of the barrels at 870 meters per second. It's got pretty good penetration, and hopefully we'll see that in the battle video. Torpedoes, it does have three triple... Uh, torpedo tube launchers, they got 8 kilometers in range, 69, 60 knots top speed, 15,100 damage, 1.2 kilometer detection range, and a, basically a 70 second reload time. Uh, if you set this ship up for a pure stealth build, you can actually use this ship pretty effectively as a torpedo destroyer with really good guns. I didn't get an opportunity to really play around with it, but Tashkent staying around for a little bit, so I'll, I'll mess around with it and let you guys know how it goes. That 3x3 torpedo configuration, you know, going back to the Japanese destroyers like Fubuki, Minikaze, Fujin, Kamikaze, Akatsuki, uh, Shimakaze, it's a very versatile loadout, and it makes hitting targets really easy with torpedoes. In terms of anti-aircraft, well, the ship does have anti-aircraft defense. Uh... It, it it's not it's not enough to really this isn't the line for shooting down aircraft. You have six dual twelve point seven millimeter guns and six dual thirty seven millimeter guns. Really nothing to write home about there. In fact, I would never spec this ship into AA. Just my personal opinion. Max speed forty two and a half knots top speed, seven hundred and thirty meter turning radius, which is Kind of long for a destroyer. 3.6 second rudder shift time. That's going to be with the tier 8 rudder shift module. And we'll talk a little bit more about that here in a second. 9.1 kilometer detection range by sea. 4.9 kilometer by air. And that's going to be without concealment expert on the captain or without the concealment module. So there's the opportunity there to lop off a bunch of that too if you wanted to. Uh, so, you know, spec into that build. We're going to talk about builds right now. So in terms of upgrades, first slot, I'm running Main Armaments Mod 1. This ship really doesn't have any AA. It also doesn't have secondaries. It's not Kiev in that regard, which makes me sad. Anyway, um, so not not any real reason to buff the anti-aircraft on this with the uh, you know increase in survivability. So we're going with Main Armaments Mod 1 for the 20% reduction in your main battery and torpedoes getting incapacitated increasing their hit point pool by 50% and decreasing the time it takes to repair them by 20%. If you are out of debt flags for whatever reason, Magazine Mod 1 is kind of a pseudo-free debt flag. 70% reduction in the chance of your magazine getting detonated. Won't stop them all, but will certainly make a big dent in it. 
In the second slot, you can see here I'm running Aiming Systems Mod 1. This is going to decrease the dispersion by 7% of your main battery and increase the torpedo tube traverse speed by 20%. And because we're not Kiev, we don't have secondaries to worry about. Uh, these other two upgrades, again, no AA worth mentioning, so not going to spec it into AA. Main Battery Mod 2. This ship's really not a close-in fighter, and the turrets are plenty quick for the longer-range engagements that the ship excels at. I really don't see any reason to spec into Main Battery Mod 2. In this third slot, I have Main Battery Mod 3 selected, which is going to decrease our main battery loading time by 12% allows us to shoot faster. It's unfortunately going to slow down our turret rotation by 13%. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter because at the, you know, eight plus kilometer range, your turrets are turning plenty quick to stay on target. So that's not too much of an issue. I could also see a good case being made for Torpedo Tubes Mod 3. You know, if you spec this ship into a full-on torpedo build and, and go the full stealth route, um, I could see this being, you know, kind of your your option that you choose. I just, I don't think it's really that solid of a build, which is why I'm not running it. So I, I'm sticking with main battery upgrades. And of course, AA Guns Mod 3, we don't have any AA, so we're not going to spec into it. In the fourth slot, I am currently running Propulsion Systems Mod 1 for the 20% reduction in your engine being incapacitated, as well as a 20% reduction in the time it takes to repair your engine. Uh... Honorable mention here to steering gears mod one. It's basically the same thing, but for your steering gears of those two, pick whichever one's your fancy. I personally find losing my engines to be a bigger detriment than losing my steering damage control systems. Mod one has no place on a destroyer. And if you have engine boost mod one, I could see you running that. That's a pretty solid upgrade for these ships. In the fifth slot, I am running Propulsion Systems Mod 2 for the 50% reduction in the time it takes to reach full power when accelerating, as well as increasing engine power when the ship starts moving. That's in that negative 6 to 6 knot range. That just helps the ship if you, you know, you're slowing down and speeding up, or you're camping on islands, you're sitting in smoke. Having this module there uh, definitely helps you not only evade incoming fire, but it helps you get out of bad situations a lot easier. Because I'm running the Steering Gears Mod 3 in the last slot, I don't need to run Steering Gears Mod 2 here. However, if you were going to do, like, say, a full stealth build on this thing, which you're not going to get the ship down to really that good of a concealment, but if you were, I would definitely recommend picking up Steering Gears Mod 2 because the steering... The rudder shift time is terrible. It's glacial for a destroyer. And yes, I know there are people out there. You don't need it on these ships. They speed tank, blah, 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 blah. I, I just, I personally recommend Propulsion Systems Mod 2. I think it's a little bit more of a better choice for this ship. Damage Control Systems Mod 2, again, has no business being on a destroyer, in my opinion. In the last slot, you can see I am running Steering Gears Mod 3 for the 40% reduction in the rudder shift time. That's the most important part of it. But the 80% reduction in the Steering Gears repair time, you know, that kind of helps out a little bit too. Honorable mention here to Concealment Systems Mod 1 for the 10% reduction in detection range, as well as the 5% increase in dispersion of shells fired at you by other ships. Target Acquisition Systems Mod 1, really not finding too many reasons to take this. I guess if you were going to be at the front of the pack with your ships and wanted to do torpedo spotting, I suppose this could be the you know a good skill for you to take. I would much rather you run Vigilance on your captain. I think that would be far more benefit, but I suppose you could run both. Of these three, I'm running Steering Gears Mod 3 because, well... I need the rudder shift time because I like agile ships. So, that's enough of me blabbing about this in port. Let's go look at a battle video. Alright, so this battle is going to be a tier 9 fight. And it is going to be on the map Hotspot, if I remember correctly. Well, maybe if it'll load. <laughs> yes, okay. So, we are on Hotspot. There's a lot of radar on the other team there. You got Katusov, Atlanta, Missouri. Actually, does I don't think I don't remember if Katusov has. I think it's an option 
if you don't take smoke. I don't remember. It really doesn't matter. There's enough smoke between the Missouri and the Atlanta, or enough radar between the Missouri and Atlanta. That's kind of a concern. Uh, on Hotspot, you know, we have the three cap modes. We have spawned over here on the C cap, which has a lot of islands for us to kind of sit and play in. We can use that to our advantage, you know, do some physical blocking of line of sight. That definitely helps out in the longer run. Of course, we have 15.2 kilometers of max battery range, too, so we can shoot over islands. Plus, we have torpedoes and speed. Lots of options here that we could pursue. Personally, uh, you know, on this map, I wouldn't normally go into C with this destroyer. It's just, it's not maneuverable enough of a destroyer to really contest caps, but because I'm over here pretty much by myself in terms of destroyers, the expectation by my teammates is to actually go in cap C, or at least attempt to go cap C. So we're going to attempt... Uh, Remember, destroyer, uh, Russian destroyer capping techniques mirror that of the Japanese destroyer capping techniques. If you are going to run into a cap, you need to give yourself an out. So get in. See, we're already detected. This is why capping in Russian destroyers is silly. Uh, give yourself an out. Make sure that you are capable of, you know, getting out of a situation. Give yourself that out. And... Okay, so we can see here, oh, that was that Buiscovitsa over there that was spotting us. So we will go ahead and we're going to park ourselves over here, praying that we don't get spotted. Oh, there's a North Carolina. That island there really isn't much of an island for cover, so don't get too terribly excited about using that little airfield there. It's not going to block much in the way of line of sight. Now, the cap is currently being contested which means that there is a destroyer in the cap with me. And that's something to be cognizant of. You see there, I launched a set of torpedoes off that way. I Maybe RPF would have been of an advantage here. Oops, see, now we're detected. So we definitely have that to be cognizant of. We are being radared. I'm, I believe that is by the Atlanta. Don't quote me on that. So we're going to launch torpedoes at the direction where I think that the enemy destroyer is in the cap but you can see we pretty much successfully waited out the um the radar without ever really getting it detected or anything like that. i mean we were detected but we didn't get we didn't take any damage so we're sitting over here whatever destroyer it was that was in cap has bailed that pretty much guarantees that they went out the west side there uh, be rare for them to go back on their teammates i'm not going to complain if that's what they did <laughs> Just, uh, ooh, hey, maybe we can get ourselves that. I don't know. Whatever it is, the destroyer is intermittently spotting me. That gets real old after a while, but trying to cap this. Like, jeez, let's get this cap going. Again, not usually too fond of, of playing the capping game in Russian destroyers without copious amounts of support which we do have just not a whole lot of room to really negotiate these islands. So I'm letting them know that the DD that was in this area is going to the west. Now, or sorry, east. Now, remember that because that's going to come back up towards the end of this shenaniganry. And, well, I hate to say I told you so, but I told you so. <laughs> uh, anywho... So, we are spotted now by the Buiscovitsa. We've got ourselves an Atlanta that we also need to pay very, very close attention to what he's doing. Uh, his aim is fantastic. A little bit of a tactical beaching there to help throw off the aim just a little bit. Let's see, does it get us? Yeah, see, we, we survived a couple of salvos there. You know, so far we're making pretty good use of the fact that uh, don't really have much in the way of hard cover. Uh, so spotted there by the Bwisk again. Turret's not really traversing too terribly well, but, you know, we're, we're kind of at this point where it, it's time for the team to make a decision. Originally, what I was going to do is I was going to go out wide and try and chase down that destroyer because he would be, you know, in a pretty good position to um, 
get behind these ships and go after our battleships back where they are relatively soft. So here's AP Stalinium. Dolores, please accept my AP rounds. Well, he's not doing a very good job of accepting them. He's actually being kind of a jerk face about the whole situation. I wish he'd just sit there and eat them. Come on. Yeah, 1,600 damage from what amounts to 5-inch AP. Yeah, buddy. Oh, ah, he disappeared. Well, of course he did. Oop, oop, and down he goes. <laughs> well, that leaves us with, uh, you know, 13,633 hit points. So now we need to make up our mind what we're going to do. And why not? We can shoot over this island. We'll just do some very heavy island abuse whole goal here is to try and, you know, mitigate damage that I'm taking, at least on this initial part, especially with the Katusov there. Switch to HE from AP because we're not getting big enough damage numbers. Come on, slow it down. Need that spotting back up. Well, guess we're gonna... we're gonna go full steam ahead. We've, we've kind of come out just a little bit too far. Not a whole lot of uh, in the way of enemy ships over here which is the reason why I'm continuing to engage. And if you ever are curious as to whether or not you can actually shoot at a target, I would highly recommend looking at your mini-map. Now, we know the Bliskovica is somewhere. Yep, miss me. <laughs> this is one of the advantages to using a long range, you know, using that longer range for the module. Uh, just being able to add that much time between in enemy incoming battleship fire and your, uh, you know, your rudder inputs. That just helps you avoid enemy incoming fire so much easier. Uh, you know, U.S. destroyer gameplay style is a lot of fun, but it's also very risky because of the way that it works. Now, our Akatsuki there is doing a pretty good job. I'm going to jump over into B, so that should be of a benefit. And we finally got another fire. Trying to get that 11% fire chance to be representative in-game. And up to 22,000 damage. Of course, the Friedrich has managed to actually burn his repair party on that. So he repaired. I, I don't know if he had two fires and mine was just the second or what. But we're going to try and start him on fire. Speaking of, now he's on fire again. And this is the disadvantage to burning your repair party on that. Oop. <laughs> Where did those come from? Hmm... Paying attention to the minimap, you would know that there are bad things hiding in the smoke over there. <laughs> there is a uh, Katusov. There's some other ships there. More importantly, we got ourselves a Buskovica. Ah, yep, Katusov. We're going to go ahead and launch torpedoes, even though I know for a fact that uh, the torpedoes are probably going to die before any ships actually get there. And the reason why I launched them, in case you were wondering, is just in case they do actually come up and try and, um, you know, land or try and rush. Oh my goodness, that was my kill. <laughs> I got robbed on the description on the dispersion there. Speaking of that d destroyer, hello North Carolina. I hate to say I told you so, but I told you so. Yep. Not one to usually wish ill will upon people, but sometimes uh, when you tell people that destroyers are going someplace, you'd think they would remember. Well, memories are short. Battleship players, right? <laughs> I used to be the same way. It's all about fighting for, you know, paying attention and, and uh, making sure that you're aware of what's going on around you. Now, I'm, <laughs> I don't know if the King George V is appreciating me steering him this way, but surprise, he's getting steered this way. <laughs> okay, so not going to get this kill. That's really annoying. 1,800 damage and still no kill. So that was that one, you know, hey, North Carolina earned it. We are up to 47,887 damage and everyone's going, this is kind of an unusual game. <laughs> Normally, we'd expect to see a kill by now. Well, let's work on that a little bit, shall we? So, we are going to head back over. Now that we've got B, we've got C and B. We have a lot of points. Ship-wise, 
you know, not really a whole lot going on there. It's 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 a lot more even than the teams would actually you know, lead you to believe. Yes, they are down three destroyers. We have, you know, a significantly higher destroyer count than they do, but they also have, you know, heavier ships as well. So this match is far from over. There is always a possibility that we could screw this up and end up, you know, losing. And our Kotsky there making an attack around, I'm hoping on that Missouri and not on the Benson, or at least not trying to be on that Benson. And unfortunately, exposing herself to a little bit more than I would really expose myself to if I were in her shoes. But we're going to come over here. The Akatsuki is basically dead. I don't know why he chose to do what he did. Now, launching these torpedoes, look at the mini-map. Look at where the Missouri is going to be. We're going to wiggle our ways a little bit further, but you can see that that hard inner circle that he is going to be in that circle. So, okay, so... Oh, we should probably wait. <laughs> uh, incoming! Uh, aha! So anytime you get shot at by a battleship, you definitely, especially in a situation like that, you want to and you need to be angling yourself so that you expose a broadside to them. It's hard to pick and choose, you know, which one, wh who do I expose my broadside to? Always err on the side of battleships. You can always eat over pen damage. Heck, we got a heal still, so I mean, we're nowhere near, a, you know, as bad of a situation as it makes it sound to be. But, hey, we managed to get ourselves a torpedo hit. No flood on that torpedo hit, so we need a fire to round this out. Up to 67,000 damage. Come on, fire. He's exposing just enough of a profile that I... Th There's the fire. Okay, so this, this Missouri is pretty much dead. It's just a matter of time. I'm actually surprised he didn't shoot at me, given how close I am to him. But, oh my goodness! Got robbed on another kill. <laughs> uh, fine. We'll just go ahead and we'll start shooting at this Colorado then. <laughs> Jeez. I don't know what this team was doing. They took kind of like the old closed beta route around this map. They went all the way around the far side there in A. That does not work very well on this map. So we managed to start the Colorado on fire. I'm slowing down here to try and get myself stopped on this island so that the only thing that can shoot at me is this Colorado, but I can shoot at him. And so far, so good. It, it's working. We just need to, well, now nah, we're gonna get out of there because uh, we, for one, we need we need caps. Not, I mean, I, I like getting all the caps because let, let's face it, that's XP. But more importantly, what's a little bit of YOLO to help our, uh, our um, damage input here. Plus, we can get torpedoes. So why not? So we went ahead and we launched our torpedoes. Making a little bit of a mistake there by turning out, but he almost missed me. And... Oh, he's shooting HE, so it wouldn't really matter anyway. So we're going to continue to engage him. Ooh, look at that. Somebody hit him hard. I don't know who. But hey, we got another fire on him. Surely we're going to get a kill in here eventually. We are up to 81,000, finally, 82,000 damage, and we finally got our first kill six minutes into this match. <laughs> well, we're going to go after the Friedrich der Gross because that's the only other ship that's really going to be easy enough to hit. He's low enough on hit points. We should be able to, in theory, get this kill. Maybe. Uh, 1,900 hit points left. Oop, 1,000 hit points left. No! Denied! <laughs> uh, so once again, now we're going to start pushing, pushing, and pushing hard. One thing to keep in mind, that smoke cloud is a Neptune. Neptunes are Royal Navy cruisers. Royal Navy cruisers only can fire AP, which means if you're going to do something, you need to be bowing to him as best you possibly can. You can see here I slowed down. Now I'm going to go back and go forward again. The whole premise behind that was to throw his aim off. It has succeeded. 
So we're going to fire off a salvo here at him. He's doing pretty decent damage. We're going to switch to AP, though. We're going to return the favor because, let's face it, you're in a Royal Navy cruiser. You are really soft skinned. I have a pretty good rate of fire advantage. Look, there's a Citadel. And it's time to get aggressive with them guns. Yes! <laughs> we got ourselves a second kill and the game ends. Overall, Tashkent, not a terrible ship at all. Uh, 97,280 damage. We got ourselves 2,125 base XP. You can see here the detailed report. Got a couple of Citadel hits in there. 40, ended up doing 20,000 damage in AP. Over almost a million in potential damage. Anyway, Tashkent plays exactly like Kiev, just with a heal option if you want it. I, I enjoy the ship. You got enough flexibility to do a lot of things with him. I definitely recommend checking him out. Anyway, I'm your Peacekeeper. Like, comment, subscribe, and thank you for watching.